I'm lamenting the fact that in our excitement about all things war, we ignore some of the most hopeful things that are out there right now, that, uh, hopeful things that need our attention. I find it interesting that it is World Contact Week. The 15th of March was World Contact Day. And it's supposed to be set aside for contemplating our place in the universe. World Contact Day was first declared in March of 1953 by an organization called the International Flying Saucer Bureau. And it's a day where, back in 1953, they theorized that if we all thought about it, if we all said sort of a telepathic prayer in our hearts, and that we were to focus it into the cosmos, focus it towards heaven, that maybe we'd all get an answer, that the message would transmit back to us, whether it be from aliens, God, who knows. The message was simply calling occupants of interplanetary craft, calling occupants of interplanetary craft that have been observing our Earth. We of the IFSB wish to make contact with you. We are your friends and would like you to make an appearance here on Earth. Your presence before us will be welcomed with the utmost friendship. We will do all in our power to promote mutual understanding between your people and the people of Earth. Please come in peace and help us in our earthly problems. Give us some sign you've received our message. Be responsible for creating a miracle here on our planet to wake up the ignorant ones to reality. Let us hear from you. We are your friends. Now, that message, of course, was part of a song that uh, was written by the band Klaatu and was eventually covered by the Carpenters. It's synchronistic that during World Contact Week, there was a uh, a picture, an image, that was sent to Earth from the James Webb Telescope. Remember, we were talking about the James Webb Telescope and how it's going to go millions of miles into space, and it will give us a glimpse of what it was like during the time of creation. And so the first images came back just a few days ago. And... They were breathtaking. They were amazing. And it was everything that I thought heaven would look like. Seriously. I, I, I always have this practical idea of what heaven would look like. It would look like just a big, bright ball of light. And surrounding it are other lights. And I, you know, in my metaphoric way of looking at things, those lights would be angels or the heavenly host surrounding one big, bright light that would represent God or represent where God lives or the representation of heaven or the celestial realms where God presides. And, of course, they tell us that that telescope is going to be showing us a lot of things that, you know, we can only theorize about. The scientific theories of evolution, the Big Bang, general relativity. They've all given us basic concepts to launch our biggest theories and discoveries. And this gives us an underlying quantitative framework enabling us to predict what will happen under a variety of situations and to then go out and test those predictions and 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 to test those approximations. Where their predictions can be described by mathematical expressions, we can tell not only what should happen, but by how much it will. Or or for these theories in particular, among many others, measurements and observations that have been performed to test theories, and all of them, most of them, now we're seeing more successes than failures. But we live in times where reality is based on science. We're told it's all about science, scientism. It's that science cannot be questioned, but science has to be tested. There are many people that argue about science, as we know it. It, it, Just an organized system of ignorance, right? It's all disinformation. Unless if we come up with another theory or another idea, it's all disinformation. See, this is the problem with trying to discuss things with people who call themselves experts, whether they're geopolitical experts or scientific experts. Most people only know what they hear from CNN or MSNBC or Fox. That's it. Unless there's somebody, you know, we get get that whole lab coat cult thing going on where if they're wearing the lab coat, we listen to them. You know, that's why, you know, yeah, we listen to Dr. Fauci. We listen to all. And and see, I doubt that there's an ultimate truth. And if it's ever found, it will be by accident. But accidents are the very thing that can wipe out our very existence. And we know this now as we're pushing ourselves closer to war. We're pushing ourselves closer to possibly a nuclear confrontation. You never know when approximations, rules, or logical steps are suddenly going to cease to describe the universe. You never know 
when your assumptions are ever going to become invalid. If the laws of nature change over time or behave differently under different conditions or in different directions and locations or aren't applicable to the system you're dealing with, of course your predictions are going to go completely south. They're going to be wrong. And that's why everything we do in science, everything that is done in science, no matter how well it gets tested, it's always, always preliminary. But technocrats don't like that kind of talk. Technocrats don't like it when you bother you know, pushing the envelope, when you go after it, when you talk that way. They want to tell you that all things scientific are settled and that nothing changes, that they are the final word. Well, science isn't settled. That's why we do push the envelope. Why bother going on adventures to learn about new things if science is settled? Why, why go into space? Why send a telescope so far into space we can see the beginnings of time? <laughs> 